It was a misty evening at the smelter's yard. Harry and Bert were preparing to go back to their shed when a horn sounded in the distance. A long green diesel rolled in, a line of trucks trailed behind. Well, 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 smirked Harry. If it ain't old Bowler himself. What brings you here, eh? Brought you to a special delivery of scrap from the mainland, smiled the big diesel proudly. Lots of bits and pieces from rusty old steamers in there. Too late to be cut him up now, yawned Bert. Leave him there, and we'll end it in the morning. The twins rolled tiredly away, as Bowler was uncovered from his tracks. He was about to leave for home when his driver realised something. Your tank's nearly empty, he said. We should have asked those two where the fuel pump is. Yeah, we don't need those silly little grunts, rumbled Bowler. I'll find that pump no problem. The driver wasn't convinced, but didn't wish to argue. Bowler traversed through the smelter's yard, his lamp being swallowed by the thickening fog. You stupid weather, he grumbled. All Bowler could make out in the mist were the husks of engines past littering the sidings. Filthy old steamers, he sniffed, glancing at their twisted remains. Only good for the torch now. What's happening now? He nearly shrieked. You've run out of fuel, you stupid diesel, sighed the driver. I'll go for help. And he did, leaving Bowler all alone, with only a single flickering light post for company. The diesel glanced around. Though the mist made things hard to see, something about his surroundings seemed different somehow. He didn't want to admit it, but it unnerved him deeply. You... came a voice. Bowler looked around. H who's there? You... did... this... The voice slithered like an agitated snake. Very funny, you two, Bowler called, but it isn't working! Suddenly he felt a fierce bump from behind. Watch it, you stupid... Bola stopped dead. The hollowed remains of a huge tender engine sat right behind him. He looked back and found another scrap engine now lining the once vacant adjacent tracks. H how? He began. You did this. The voice continued, now accompanied by several others. Did what? stammered Bola. He thought he could feel someone, or something, stirring right through his frames, but he didn't dare look back. We used to be useful, the voices hissed. We all learned until you diesels came along. Ha! snorted Bowler, trying to sound brave. We diesels are the way of the future. Your time was simply up. Don't talk to us about our time! We had years of life left in us. And you and you laughing as you send us to be buried early. Suddenly, Bowler could hear creaking sounds coming from the mist. He stared in fright as several mangled scrap engines began to crawl out of the fog towards him. The eyes on their cadaverous faces staring at him with nothing but pure hatred. Perhaps we ought to bury you early. It's your time then, sup today. Only good for the torch. Together, the scrap engines began to surround Bola from all sides. The Diesel was petrified and could only stare at their gleeful faces as they inched closer, swallowing him whole in their shadows. Take him to the Cutter's siding, 
I'll finish him off myself. Bowler could only plead for help as the scrap engines dragged him away, shunting him into an overgrown siding surrounded in mist. We'll deal with you later. They sneered and limped delightfully away. Bowler stared frightfully around. There was not a sound to be heard apart from the maniacal cackling of the scrap engines. The remains of engines, coaches and trucks passed, littered the rails, and the air began to grow hotter. Almost as if he was being surrounded from all sides by torches, ready to cut him up. P please he whimpered, someone help me. There isn't much time, came a voice. Another rusted tender engine had appeared behind him. P please he begged. Don't scrap me, please. Do as I say, and you won't be, said the engine, giving a comforting smile. Who are you? asked Bowler slowly. Uh, another engine whose days were ended short, sighed the engine. It's not your fault. Time marches on, and engines get replaced, no matter how old or young. It seems these poor souls have forgotten that. But, 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 but why are you helping me? I'm a diesel, you know, and I haven't been very kind to you steamers. You and I aren't so different, really, smiled the old engine. I spent too many of my working days looking down on others for being smaller, slower, or weaker than me, when I could have made several good friends instead. Life's too short to be rude to fellow engines. I wish I'd learned that sooner. There was a long silence as the two engines snuck through the fog. Well, here we are, said the engine at last. Bowler looked around. He was parked right next to the fuel pump. Th 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 thank, thank you, he stuttered, breathing a sigh of relief. Why don't you come back with me, Steamer? he asked finally. I'm sure someone could fix you up and put you back to work. Maybe your time's not up yet. C could, could I get your name at least? He stopped. The engine was nowhere to be seen. It had vanished into the motionless mist without a trace. Oh, there you are, cried his driver, emerging from the darkness. Where on earth were you? How'd you even get here? Bowler said nothing. Once he was refueled, he rolled quietly back home with much to think about. Despite his best efforts, he has never been able to relocate the sidings he found himself in that misty night. Ari and Bert think he sucked up another house. And while Bowler can't make heads or tails of it, he is a different engine now. He no longer taunts the other engines with threats of scrap, and is much more mindful of those which line the sidings of the smelter's yard. In spite of the horror he experienced that night, Bowler is still hopeful that one day, he can find those hidden sidings again. If only to find the kind soul that helped him find his way to safety, and perhaps, give him a little extra time.